Take a look at this. I have really been outdoing myself today, cleaning everything up, both here and at the Roach Palace. Which brings me to my next subject. Do any of you know what this thing is? I was over at the Roach Palace the other day, cleaning things up, or more accurately, shoveling crap around in preparation to clean it up, because the day is probably getting closer when the Roach Palace is going to be emptied out and then taken down. Now, I'm not just going to tear it down wholesale, I'll actually go to the trouble of saving things that seem worthwhile. But while I was over there, I discovered this, and this is a Pioneer LaserDisc player, an LD-V4400 model, that I had totally forgotten I had. Now, this isn't really my player. I actually went up uh, to Wisconsin a couple years ago and picked up a bunch of IBM PS2 related stuff from a guy, and uh, ever since then, which I think was in 2009, I've been storing this stuff for him, and I hope that maybe someday I can return it to him, because he has returned home from his service in the military, so I'm hoping that at some point he's going to want his stuff back. But if not, it's got a safe home here. Anyway, one of the things that uh, came along in this collection of stuff was, of course, this LaserDisc player. Now, what does a LaserDisc player have to do with IBM PS2s? Well, it doesn't, but somehow or another he'd stumbled into this thing an IBM Business Partner Education Set. And there's a whole bunch of stuff in here. There's a CD-ROM, there's two CD-ROMs, there's a paper booklet here. I don't really have enough kitchen table to do all this. Um, business Partner Education pamphlets with uh, various hardware details, stuff like that. Some of this stuff's pretty cool to look at. And then, of course, there's a book in here that's actually uh, a hardware maintenance manual for all the models that were... I don't know that I can get that out of there. Um, but you'll have to take my word for it. <laughs> um, hardware maintenance manual for uh, all the models that existed at the time that this was uh, created. The microchannel systems, the 50 through the 80. Although the 90 and 95 are mentioned in here, so I don't know if this thing has been cobbled together from multiple sets or what. But it also came with couple of laser discs. Now for those of you who are not familiar with laser discs, laser discs are an early video format that was a, a competitor to the uh, popular tape based formats such as VHS and Betamax. But laser disc had competition of its own in the form of RCA's competing CED or capacitive capacitance electronic disc format. I believe that's the correct uh, definition of that acronym. Now, RCA CED used a disc that was read with a stylus like a phonograph record. LaserDisc, on the other hand, was read optically using a laser. Now, despite that, and despite its similar similarity to digital data storage formats, LaserDisc is actually an analog video format. That is to say that the video is not digitally compressed or anything like that. And some people think that that's a better approach. LaserDiscs uh, do have a bit of a following even today although the players have not been made since Pioneer canceled production of the last few uh, units in 2009 or so, according to the information I found. But they still have their fans, and there are some movies that were released on LaserDisc, but haven't yet made the transition to DVD. Now, LaserDisc itself dates to about 1978 or so, when the first players and discs came out, but work had started on the format before then even, in the 1960s. It was being proposed that movies could be placed on an optical disc. And some people feel that LaserDisc offers a better presentation simply because it doesn't use a lossy form of digital compression like DVDs do. The MPEG-2 compression that's used with DVDs is actually looking for data to throw away that won't be noticed by the human eye. And so during scenes of fast motion and stuff, it may drop out data that it feels is redundant whereas the analog video coming off of a laser disc doesn't do that. Laser discs also typically have analog formatted audio, although there were digital audio formats and even surround sound introduced to them later in life. Now I went ahead and played with this thing earlier and found that while the video portion seems to work, it's putting a herringbone pattern on all of its output. I don't know if maybe it's overdriving the video inputs of the television sets that I've tried it on. And the audio is most certainly not working properly. On really high sounds, like telephones ringing and things like that, you can just hear the audio coming out of the unit, 
It's coming out of the left channel only. The right one seems pretty much dead. And I'm not sure what's going on with that, but I thought it would be worthwhile to demonstrate this anyway. So let's take a look at a laser disc here. They actually look kind of like big silvered turntable records. They're about the same size as well. Yes, they are shiny and they are reflective, and that has to count for something. Look at this bozo running the camera here. <laughs> Do you want to handle them by their edges because they can be easily damaged? Hello, ceiling fan. So let's go ahead and take this thing in the other room. I'll hook it up to the TV and then we can have a demonstration of it. Now, while Laserdisc did not really enjoy a whole lot of success in the uh, conventional home video market, as it was something that really only the well-heeled could afford, Laserdiscs did enjoy a considerable measure of success being used in things like early multimedia kiosks where a computer could control the laser disc player and randomly seek to uh, video presentations. They also saw use in video games for much the same thing. And certain companies, such as uh, automakers, picked up on the technology as well for uh, in-dealership demonstrations. We had a Ford dealership here in this town many years ago, and I can remember they had a laser disc player hooked up to a Sony Trinitron television in the lobby that was actually built into kind of a display and it ran a video reel about various Ford automobiles. Well, Laserdisc players almost always have a means for computer control on them. You can see the RS-232C port there which would uh, allow you to hook it to a compatible computer serial port and issue software commands to the device. Now, a little bit more on the broken audio on this thing. Pioneer claims that this uh, Laserdisc player, this LDV4400, supports both analog and digital audio outputs. It was produced in late 1993. And I don't know exactly what's wrong with it, but I, don't, I did not find any dip switches or mode selection buttons or anything like that. However, I don't have a remote for it, and I don't know if maybe the remote would allow me access to anything like that. Given that the analog audio is coming through and it's just distorted, I really think that something is probably internally broken and I need to get a uh, service manual for it if I want to fix it. But I haven't touched it for at least two years now, so I'm not sure how important that is to me. I'm also not sure if maybe somebody else was playing around inside this thing because there seem to be some screws that are missing from it. Over here on the front, they have just what you'd expect to see as far as playback controls go. There's an open and close button, there's a play button, still frame and step buttons, scanning buttons, and this player is unique in that it supports a feature called LD-ROM, which basically allows you to use a laser disc as a computer data storage medium. It's my understanding that that allows uh, 300 and change megabytes worth of storage capacity. You can also see a display button over here, which enables an on-screen display that seems to show only the frame number. And of course there's a row of activity lights up here showing when the unit is in LD-ROM mode, when it's busy, when it's parked, when it's playing, and when you're searching. There's also a thing on this called laser barcode. And what laser barcode does, it allows you to hook up a barcode reader and when you scan that barcode reader across a specially formulated barcode it tells the laser disc player exactly where to pick up and start playing on a given laser disc. Let's go ahead and have a demonstration of this crazy thing. Okay, we've got the television turned on. Got the laser disc player turned on. Let's open the tray here. Now, a laser disc is just a big polycarbonate plastic disc. Same basic material that compact discs, DVDs, and Blu-rays and other things are made out of. But it's very big and it's very heavy. And so these things typically have a fairly powerful spindle motor and you can really hear the disc spin up when it gets to going. So let's go ahead and try that. All right, and the busy, no, that's the, uh, that's the park light. When I go ahead and hit play, you get to hear this thing spin up. I don't know if the camera's microphone is sensitive enough to pick it up or not, but I guess we'll find out.
And when it reaches the desired speed, you get video. And here's a guy coming in to check into a hotel. He's up at the front desk. He's talking to these two nice ladies. You can kind of see the herringbone pattern in the video there. All decked out in their finest early 1990s apparel. You can also hear the soft rushing static in the background. You can just barely hear a highly distorted version of their voices in the background if you put your ear up to the TV speaker. And it's only coming out of the left speaker anyhow, so something is definitely screwed up there. He's getting ready to check into the hotel here. And I can go ahead and fast forward the video. Oh look, he's coming to his hotel room. He's found the TV. What do you suppose is on the TV? Now somebody actually digitized this uh, little commercial. It's an IBM PS2 music video of sorts called How You Gonna Do It? PS2 It. And I really wish that the audio was working properly. If I still have a copy of this video, and I don't uh, fear the copyright police too much, I might just go ahead and upload it so you can hear it with the soundtrack. Nice shot of a Delco radio there in his Chevy van. And here he comes to sit down at his PS2, which is a good thing to do. And of course I can run the video back. I can pause it and freeze frame it and do stuff like that. And I can single step it. Which you can barely recognize me doing here. So go ahead and hit play. It doesn't always get right even on the video frames, which is what I think is causing that jittering effect. But there you have it. That's a basic look at a laser disc.